Ross. And Alan talking about movies. They may be best friends, but they always disagree. Ross. And Alan, I seen that. Ross, this is our what fourth podcast together? Third, fourth? Something I think like so. That. And uh, that sounds right. The last one we did together was God's Not Dead One, and I believe it. it <sighs> yeah, it transformed your life, right? That's what you were saying after the podcast that you. Well, I, you I am a Christian now. Yeah, <laughs> your whole life view has changed. You, uh, you become a Christian. Absolutely. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, Josh so, Wheaton changed me. <laughs> we decided, well, we should continue with that and watch God's Not Dead Two. And further, well, it was more your suggestion. <laughs> I think it was very much you suggested this. I don't want to take too much blame for this. I don't know. I feel like it was your idea. I feel maybe I don't remember because I, I said number three was coming out, and you got really excited about that. Well, I saw the ads. I saw it at a theater I went to, and I was considering going in to see it, but I hadn't seen the second one yet, and I I knew I'd be confused <laughs> <laughs> um, because of the intricate storytelling at play. What did you think overall? What's your overall impression of God's Not Dead 2? Love it? 10 out of 10? <laughs> well, obviously I love it. Um, I guess I was kind of surprised mm. that it wasn't it wasn't as bad as the first one, Yeah, I'll say. I was shocked that it looked and generally felt like a real movie. It did. The production value went up a ton way up yeah like they they got a better aspect ratio it didn't look like a youtube video anymore yeah. or like some sort of gopro um, film movie really low budget netflix show or something yeah. not to poo poo those but i mean those are all better than this but uh it wasn't that crazy i guess it was just really boring it, it was like, just <laughs> really boring <laughs> it was i uh just so dull <laughs> i i was kind of more offended by this one actually than the first one because really? I think it's more effective as a propaganda piece than the first one. The first one you can watch it, yeah. and you see like, oh, they're they're going way too hard on about how evil mm-hmm. atheists are. And in this one, they made the Christians way more sympathetic. And they're like, oh, this is clearly unfair. And this is just atheists attacking Christians because they hate Jesus. And that, the atheists were a lot more evil than this one. They did do they were, that creepy smile to the camera a lot. <laughs> yeah, but it wasn't that. It was like a lot of dehumanization too, because mm. they have the, the 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 main character sort of. Because everyone's kind of a main character yeah. in this. Um, but the main teenage girl who asks the question about Jesus that gets this whole ball rolling. Her brother dies, and she's seemingly really broken up about it i think she said it was six months ago six months before this all happened something like that and something like that yeah Uh, not that long i i mean i'm I'm guessing for that sort of loss and her parents like maybe that's their coping mechanism they seem totally cool with it but she still really busted up about it and clearly they they seem to strongly imply because they're atheists they don't care yeah I mean, that's the kind of the vibe I get from it, and because and she learns to care more when she becomes a Christian, which is a weird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, the uh, that her storyline was strange. Like all we it was, know, it was a weird about her parents is he's a businessman and she's like a yoga mom, and they I guess <laughs> don't care about their kids. It's just kind of the impression you get. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. and so the girl is all torn up about her brother dying. So she goes to her teacher who is Melissa Joan Hart, which she was, uh, yeah. Sabrina. Is that right? Sabrina. The yeah. Teenage that's Witch? what that was. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, and now she's doing this. So the, the career's looking up <laughs> and, uh, she goes to her and is looking for advice. And this whole movie, you look at Melissa Joan Hart's character she it had like a premonition that this was all coming because everything she did was preparing a defense to be attacked over it. Like she talked to right. her outside of school about Jesus. <laughs> when she referenced Jesus in the Bible in the classroom, she was like, well, the writer of Matthew said this and like did basically was like doing everything perfectly to avoid any mm-hmm. issues. 
And, that and that's felt- why the, the central conceit of this movie, I guess it doesn't hold together as well. I mean, the first one didn't make any sense because no yeah. professor would like offer up that much time to a student yeah. for a pointless exercise. It was more like they're, they're jumping through so many hoops to get there. Yeah to make you think like this would actually happen was, did they have a bunch of things? I, I turned it off as soon as it ended. I didn't want to sit through the credits. Yeah. Did they have a bunch of like news articles or something court like that cases. at the end? They had a bunch of court right. cases and, and I believe none of them. Everyone was Googling. Yeah. yeah. All of the cases and they all, they were very tangentially related. One of them was a guy who was like handing out Bibles to students and stuff like mm. crazy stuff like that. Yeah. Which, and this is the, so I think, it's just this, again, this, like the first one, this weird prosecution complex that for some reason, these, these, um, Hollywood Christians, these very rich and well, and not, it's based in Arizona, actually pure flex, but these very clearly well off, uh, Christians seem to have, which is that they're being persecuted and it's hard to get on the same side as them Yeah, through this movie. Well, I'm a Christian and I have a hard time getting on the same side with them in this movie. I'm yeah. Like, you guys are just making stuff up like obviously in the movie in the world of the movie she was being persecuted and it's easy to feel um sympathetic to her right because she didn't do anything Mm -hmm. wrong and her whole life is you know getting turned upside down but when you consider oh someone wrote this someone came up (laughs) with this idea and they're forcing all this stuff to happen and then it's like oh no this is just crazy like if this was a a, yeah. a true story, then it would be somewhat tragic for Melissa Joan Hart's character. But mm-hmm. because it's not a true story, there's no, it doesn't hold any weight, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And what what it's missing, it's missing that special God's not dead, crazy Christian flavor. Mm. Like it's missing insanity. Yeah. I, I wrote down some notes and I only have like three points that are actual crazy things that happened, which okay. was so disappointing to me. So my three points are that one is very minute, which is uh, after her, the first class, we see Melissa Joan Hart teaching mm-hmm. uh, a bunch of kids are leaving and they have a bunch of 80 yard like kid lines. They're all talking and you hear a girl say hashtag whatever. And that made me laugh very hard yeah. because that's how the teens talk. I yeah. guess I always say um, hashtag when I talk. Yeah. The second one was when um, the person playing the the mom of the main teenage girl, yes. she was the mom in Wizards of Waverly Place. That really freaked me out. <laughs> and uh, the third thing is that uh, God healed cancer. That was my third thing. Yeah, that was a that was a that was the where I thought, okay, we're getting crazy. This is good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That, you want to talk about that? Yeah, yeah. So the the character from the first God's Not Dead, the blogger who, yes, the blogger who cancer blogger, she was like TMZ Duck Dynasty at church. Yeah, like it was like gotcha journalism <laughs> so for a blog. But I was like so confused at <laughs> who actually is reading her blog. Like she seemed like she was I'm famous. Just remembering now. Sorry to interrupt. I'm just yeah. remembering now. That she she did gotcha journalism to record their voices, which she later wrote down for a blog. Yeah. There's so many layers to this. <laughs> that's why the first movie's so fun. Yeah. This was just a trial. <laughs> yes. They so she she goes after the Duck Dynasty guys for a blog that seemingly nobody reads. Like that was my mm-hmm. impression. Like it she seems like that's her career, but do people actually make careers out of blogs? Is that still Anymore? a thing? Well, she said something about getting some sponsors soon. I oh, think that was that's a thing. right. Yeah, yeah. Because she was talking to Dean Kane about that. Yeah. Oh, Dean Kane. That's they what this weird movie cast people. Yeah. How did they cast Ernie Hudson in this movie? What's he doing here? He he actually did a good job. Uh, What's Ray Wise doing in this? Why is Ray Wise in this movie? He's too good for this. <laughs> <laughs> He's way too good for this. Yeah, it was. I thought I thought Ernie Hudson was great as the judge. Um, he felt so out <laughs> was, of place. He was, <laughs> he was in like a different movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was like, uh, I, I don't know. Maybe they gave him a different yeah. script. 
maybe he just he i guess he really connected with the material because he was going for it and i respected that but it was in service of nothing because an hour and a half of just the most boring trial meandering story had gone by and every now and then we just cut to things that other people were doing like yeah. the the priest um the love child of paul rudd and owen wilson yeah yeah i actually uh, who, the first time movies. in the first podcast you said that and i was like i don't really see that and then in this one i was like oh yeah no, no definitely i see it I yeah totally he's a very it. paul rudd face yeah and I, there were a few times because I was just so bored and trying to entertain myself in any way. I would just close my eyes and I heard Paul Rudd. Like I thought it was <laughs> Paul Rudd. So, I mean, I guess he has that bit of charm going for him while he's making all these horrible pieces of garbage. It does I, feel a little self-indulgent because he's making all these and he's like, I got to be in them. I got to give myself something to do. Uh, appendicitis, I guess. And I'm, I, I guess looking at the the arc of the the Chinese kid across these weird it's getting a little more horrifying to me Mm. (laughs) because it starts it starts out maybe horrifying is a bit uh hyperbolic but it starts out with him america to go to school and he's seeing all this culture and then he gets converted into a christian not forcibly but he gets sort of propaganda into being a christian and then he loses everything in this movie like his father disowns him comes all the way and i'll i'll get back to that another point on that in a second um and then at the end he's like it's my real calling to become a minister (laughs) which is it uh it's 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 i don't know i get a weird vibe from this it feels a little uncomfortable to me yeah yeah no i but it also felt uncomfortable yeah was sorry uh, what also felt uncomfortable was that once per movie in this mm. um a a distinctly foreign father character has to beat their child happened what? in the first one happened in this one it Who? was shorter in this one there was the um the uh arabic father in the first one like beat his daughter to death yeah and, and she ran out in the street they get a, fo- a foreign person gets beaten and disowned once per movie weird trend <laughs> I, I don't remember like anyone getting beaten in this one. Why? Who? Who got beat? Well, he got slapped. He didn't get beaten up, but he got slapped, and it was like sort of a disgrace kind of thing. The Chinese guy. They got, they kind of hit those same beats. It happens when his dad came to visit him, and he's like, "You're no longer my son." Man, I don't remember. He slaps that at all. him. That was the brief second where I was sort of into it again because I was <laughs> I was so nodding brain off, dead watching heard, this movie. <laughs> then I heard the slap. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I just, I wanted to go off about this. I just really don't have that much to say because I just, I was zoning out. And the, the, I guess I have a note here. Um, They tried so hard to make the lawyer cool. Like they tried so hard to make him like the cool guy. The young lawyer? Oh, yeah. Uh, Jesse. And, you know, he's. Metcliffe? Is that his name? Probably. Jesse Metcliffe? Something something like that. Jesse McCartney? Who knows? (laughs) Uh, I wish it was Jesse McCartney, but they just, they try so hard. Like, Oh, he isn't quite dressed like a lawyer. And he's got a little bit of stubble and a nice yeah. haircut. Look at him go. And all the other, like the, the snotty atheist lawyers are like, well, he's, he doesn't even look like a lawyer. <laughs> and then at the end he comes in, in and he's <laughs> almost, almost clean shaven, but he has a soul patch, which I think kills the whole professional vibe very hard. <laughs> yeah. Soul patch. You can't do anything. <laughs> Uh, and to be taken seriously that. if you have a soul patch. That's the rule about a soul patch. But uh, yeah, I just the getting it, back the to the time I was thinking, the uh, blogger. She got mm-hmm. she got hexed by Duck Dynasty and ended up with cancer in the first movie. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it ends with her meeting the newsboys. Who the first yep. movie was just a commercial for their world tour. Uh, the Newsboys, yeah. if you don't know, is a Christian uh, band. I don't. I guess pop band. You think I haven't listened to all their music since the first one? <laughs> Just on repeat. They didn't buy all their CDs. Um, and so they they become friends with this blogger who was like originally <laughs> for some reason. Yeah, like they're super accessible, I guess. Uh, just for this one lady, and they be- yeah. they go- become best friends, and then this movie starts off with her cancer being gone and she calls the newsboys yeah. and they have the most awkward conversation <laughs> on the phone. Like if, yeah. if someone called you and was like, Hey, my cancer is gone. You would yeah. be excited. And this guy's like, yeah. Oh wow. That's great. 
like just so awkward like i mean he's not an actor yeah, for one but maybe don't clearly. put him in that role <laughs> like that seems like an easy yeah. but you gotta use i mean well those the, yeah those are the two craziest lines in the movie i have the other one written down the first one is when she says all my cancer has gone and he says the the the, uh, the power of prayer is like great or something mm. i'm like no the chemotherapy probably helped with that a lot more than <laughs> but did she go through chemo take a shot in the dark and in this movie <laughs> There was no, well, there was no on-screen chemo because how else can they put all the credit on God? Yeah, that's If they true. showed her like in a hospital uh, besides getting her results, that'd be ridiculous. Uh, people don't do that. They just pray and it goes away. Uh, and the other line, which really made me cringe, which was like the, I think the worst line of the movie probably, which was um, uh, Melissa Joan Hart's father or grandfather. I'm not quite clear who I was almost certain was going to die, but didn't shockingly. Yeah. Uh, was when he says atheism doesn't take away the pain. It just takes away the hope. The hope yeah. Which was, <laughs> I mean, there's a lot to unpack there. I don't like this movie's attitude of like, y there is, there is no, there is no lack of the, the only thing that exists is a lack of faith. Like Christianity is the default for humans. Mm. It's so weird and cringy yeah. to take well, that like approach to this kind of story. It's very narrow minded. Like, yeah, you know, I, I believe Christianity is the right thing, but they're acting like it's mm -hmm. the, the only option for a logical person. And that's yeah. not really fair. And that's why, and thereby atheists are like these evil, like emotionless, moral free people who will do whatever they want to get whatever they want. I'm surprised there wasn't a subplot about how the, I mean, they were being like the lawyers seem to be acting almost independently just because they wanted to i'm not sure what ray wise's motivation was well he, he wanted to prove he that god up, was dead the house. yeah that's what yeah. he said he's like we're gonna prove that yeah. god's yeah. dead and that's such a weird thing I, because why would he use that language <laughs> like that but if, why is that his motivation for like his legal career <laughs> yeah Even, like say he's being paid off by the school board or something because they want to eliminate prayer in school or something like have that be happening but then he goes to butter up the parents by saying like you know you're this will give your kid a better chance of getting into a school which i doubt yeah that having seems some sort of tangential relation it seems weird that to a case would help causing a big issue for a school and a big court case would be a benefit to getting into yeah school. like that doesn't that didn't line up with me Logically. informants don't get into the standard just because they hand in a drug dealer like it's not the same thing <laughs> yeah yeah but like if if he is an atheist right if he doesn't believe that there's any god why would he mm -hmm. say i want to prove that god is dead why it would be, he would say i want to prove that god doesn't exist or that it's a fairy tale or it's you know that it's not yeah. saying that i want yeah. to prove that god is dead is implying that god existed at some point like it's just a and weird it's, well, I mean, yeah it's it's the back to the whole like christianity is the default for humans point yeah. because uh it's this idea of like you can't not believe in god you have to hate it it was the same thing with the professor yeah. because he had his personal beef with god in the first one and that's why he hated god and didn't want god around and blah 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 and this one there's no there's no simple logical human reason have him be greedy the school board's paying him off. They want prayer out of school, separation of church and state to the nth degree. Mm. His job is to get it out of there. Set use this case as a as a point to say like, if you even mention God, you're screwed, and like just shut it out of schools. Yeah. Have that be the focal point. But but because it's all centered around a very simple scenario in which in a history class, someone asks if one historical thing was like something from a historical text and she quotes the historical text. Yeah. And for some reason, I mean, the whole thing is they keep saying in the movie too, well, all I did was answer a question and that's where it would end in real life. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and she yeah, was they, talking about a pastor. She was talking about a reverend. Yeah. You know, like his whole life <laughs> was based on that historical text. So for him to mm. to say something that's in line with something in the Bible was like, oh, yeah, no, that, yeah, you're right. Yeah. That it, it is pretty close to that because he believes along the same lines as that. It's, yeah, it's a very weak um, uh, attempt at becoming a victim. Like they, 
Yeah, <clears throat> the victimhood mentality never works in this story, in any of these stories. No. I don't even know what the third one's going to be about. I didn't hear anything Actually, about it. I knew this one was about like a school trial. I don't know what the next one's about. I heard there's like an explosion in it. That's all I know. Yeah, I think the church burns down. But uh, Good. I think it's it's actually supposed to be a lot better than these first two, where well, that's the, a low bar, isn't it? <laughs> that's true. Oh, it's better than God's not dead too. But the, dude, you're kidding me. The the like the antagonist is almost the pastor, I believe. Like he has like a crisis of okay. faith and is struggling, and that it's not mm-hmm. it's not a, an external attack. It's a internal crisis, which. Okay. Sounds more interesting. I don't know if it's any better. I have low you like <laughs> low expectations for anything that Pure Flix does. Although I do yeah. want to watch was it Revolutionary Road? Something like that? Yes. The yeah. <laughs> the post apocalyptic because it's it's the same past. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Mad Max but Christian. That's uh, exactly what Mad Max was missing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they would have won Best Picture if they'd had Pure Flix make it. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, it's it's so. That's I guess is what's frustrating about the pure flicks model and the fact that you know they're just making garbage. Yeah, is like there are interesting stories to tell with religion, especially with Christianity, because it's so prevalent. Yeah, and you know maybe there is a good story you can tell about the question of the separation of church and state, and like what's the line you should draw. But it, they're not trying to tell a story; they're just trying to say we're being pushed to the sidelines yeah. in public life and, and in education life. It's like, well, you know what? There's a time and place for it with Christianity. And, but the, the situation presented in this film does not reflect how real life works. And that's why these movies fail. Well, there's, there's this weakness. I think that uh, a lot of Christians can have where they, they are so aggressive about their faith because they're insecure about it. And this movie okay. kind of points to that, at least the way they make it like where like you're talking about the the dad or the grandpa saying like, oh, atheism doesn't take away the pain. It only takes away the hope. And yeah. you look at the Bible, you look at um, Paul, who's, you know, you would consider the, the best missionary biblically. He's mm-hmm. he, he's talking to God at one point. And he's like, you know, if you want to take me now, if you want to in my life i'm good i'm ready to go like this life is tough i don't want to do this anymore but i'll keep going but if you're ready to take me mm-hmm. take me that's not what pure Flix is saying right they're saying like oh if you're a christian everything's great and everything's happy and your life is perfect and everything is brightly lit and you're young and beautiful not old and bitter like all the atheists and it's like oh yeah. man like if you actually are doing what the Bible is saying and like following what Christ had said, your life yeah. isn't easy. It's way more complicated, yeah. way more difficult and way more sacrificial mm-hmm. than you would want it to be by choice. And you only do that because you truly believe. So mm-hmm. the pure Flix is putting this, this fake faith out of mm-hmm. we we have to be super aggressive. Otherwise it's going to reveal that we don't really believe what we're saying. Yeah, and it does. You do get that kind of vibe through the uh, atheist Fox News. Yeah, it's Apex News. In Apex, this. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. that. Which is, I think, how Pure Flix sees CNN. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> which is just like the the most. It's basically atheist Alex Jones, but on like a real news network. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just like making everything about how like they're trying to destroy Christianity, and I, I don't know. That just struck me as really weird and and uh, tone deaf because. I don't know if that was a parody or something, but it's like, you know that y- your side is doing this, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is kind of thing you guys do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the, yeah. the, the frustrating part with the victim mentality of this movie and just kind of Christianity in America as it can be with the, at least the what's put out like in media and stuff or on Facebook, or whatever mm-hmm. is Christians are way more, uh, judgmental and aggressive and you know like attacking than most other people that's why there's such a good target because people are frustrated with being told you're bad you're bad you're bad you need to be like us 
when they're not good. You know, when behind closed doors, they're a bad person too. They just, Mm -hmm. they're putting up this facade of like, oh, I'm good. Be like me. So people are like, no, I don't want to do that. Your your life is just as pointless as mine. What are you talking about? And Mm -hmm. they, they, they act like, oh, I'm being attacked because I don't know. It, it's all, it's, it's really frustrating, especially being on the Christian team where it's like, man, you guys need to be better. Like the, uh, going back yeah, to the, what I the, see how that would be frustrating. What the dad said about, you know, oh, this doesn't take away the pain. It only takes away the hope. It kind of, I feel like it's almost should be an opposite point of view of, you know, being Christian doesn't take away the pain. It, it gives you hope, you know, like instead of saying point, Oh, atheism is bad because they don't, it doesn't give you any hope or whatever. I was yeah. like, no, being Christian doesn't remove all your problems. You're still going to have them. Like that's, it's crazy yeah. to think just becoming a Christian solves everything. Yeah. It's, it's all about in terms of like taking away the pain or the hope or whatever, it's all about how you can rationalize loss and rationalize pain. And the the good thing about religion is it gives people a solid thing that they can grasp onto mm-hmm. and look towards and rely on to get through life. Yeah. And that doesn't work for everybody. And it's not always Christianity. And sometimes people have to grasp onto friends or family or substance abuse. Not a great plan, but it works for some people <laughs> for a little for, bit. For a short time, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it quote unquote works. But it, it, it's it all comes back to the point where the people making this don't see any reality or any sort of human experience beyond their own. I think it's just, I grew up Christian. God is the answer to everything. And that's what the movie's about. I think I, I don't know. I wonder how much pure flicks is tone deaf and how much they're just really aware of their audience because this, Uh, this is, I mean, this is like exactly what, if you want to pander to Christians, this is what you're going to make. And yeah, it, the ending is like peak, just peak, uh, self aggrandizing. Yeah. Like if they come out and the, the music's rising, the, the, the God's not dead song is coming up. There's a giant crowd outside and the girl goes, God's not dead. And everyone cheers yeah. and the music kicks in and the concert, there's like, it cuts to a little girl in the crowd, like singing along. It's like, Oh, the future is secure. The yeah. Christians are going to be okay. Everyone. And I'm just like, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't care. <laughs> Again, why did she say God's not dead as a sign of we won the court case? Like, I feel like if that I wasn't was what they were arguing, <laughs> yeah. If I was in the crowd and I'd be like, all right, what's that mean? Like, do you know <laughs> she, what happened? Get, <laughs> how did they tell? I mean, how did they find? Yeah. Other? And it, oh man. That's, this, that's what you should say. <laughs> but it's the title of the movie, so. Oh, that's right. I always forget about that. Yeah. You gotta have the title in there. Branding. What did, I'm gonna get a God's Not Dead tattoo. Did you understand <laughs> the, um, the, the st- storyline with the passers having to turn in all their sermons from the last three months. Like that felt injected out of nowhere and not resolved. Everything that isn't the trial in this movie has zero purpose. Yeah. It was just another Which is crazy that this movie is two hours. Victim. Why is thing. this movie two hours? <laughs> Cause why one, I don't think that's real, right? Like I, I maybe I'm wrong, yeah. but I don't think the government is requesting three months of sermons from pastors. And if, and if they did, and if you don't comply with that, you don't just get to say, here's a letter and walk out, I don't think. Yeah, and also- I'm not too familiar with how, how a subpoena works. I'm pretty sure they'd maybe hold you for questioning or send another letter. I mean, he goes to the hospital right after, but there's going to be some follow through on that. Yeah. Well, th- it just, it didn't make any sense. I mean, maybe that's the point, <laughs> but like, I just didn't yeah, get it. I, mean- I didn't get why- it was a problem for them to do it also. Like if there was a, if the government came down and was like, you can't talk about this thing, then I understand being like standing up against that. But for the government to be like, Hey, can you just let us know what you've talked about the last three months? You should be fine with that. Like that doesn't seem, that doesn't seem that crazy. Like if you have the notes, if you have everything already, like 
why are you worried about giving over that information? And I'm just hurt that Josh Wheaton didn't come back. I of know. all the characters, he Josh comes, Wheaton did not return. He comes back in the third one, I believe. Good. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> um, the guy from I the say first that one. Ironically, <laughs> the guy from the first one, the uh, um, the rental car guy, shows up in this one. Oh my God, that was so weird. Why did he come back? I don't know. Why? What? Why was that scene in there? The, again, that, w- that was at the meeting with all the pastors and the, yeah. yeah you cut that scene and the other scene where he has to deliver it you uh, lose a good 10 minutes off the movie that are completely meaningless yeah yeah they i mean unless yeah, it it, <sighs> it was establishing the third one which i guess could be a potential they're like they, they don't think that far ahead <laughs> <laughs> you know you think they've planned this <laughs> it's like nick fury in the avengers or uh, in iron man oh my god That'd be great. Actually, you know what? If it was set up, I would be really impressed. <laughs> it would it would if be it an impressive amount of forethought. I mean, for as if they were already writing it, yeah. The uh for as little as they did to do anything with that. If that's the the yeah. story of the third one, it would make a little more sense, but that that's a long <laughs> time for a useless storyline in this one. Yeah. Or, I feel like this is a really low energy episode and it's just because this movie is so dull. Well, it sucked all the energy out yeah. of us. It uh There's nothing there's nothing to talk about cuz the trial just goes on and on and on and on and then we cut away and two people are talking in a church and then back to the trial for another 20 minutes and then we cut away and the used car salesman is delivering coffee and then they cut away and then it's back to the trial and it's like it's just just make an hour and a half long movie that's just a trial. I know you can't have the movie has like three scenes total, I think. <laughs> yeah. Well, they they did a little better at making a case for why God's not dead in this one, but they didn't really do that good of a job in my opinion. Yeah. Like they brought in Lee Strobel who wrote A Case for Christ, which is a really famous book in Christian circles. Uh but he didn't really say okay. anything other than like, yeah, I you know, I, I looked at it and everyone agrees that he existed. Like, just look at the historical stuff around him and, you know, non, non-Christians non will admit that he exists. So to say that he doesn't exist is crazy. Oh, is that is that the guy who gave like a 10 minute <laughs> sermon, that just his book pitch about the evidence? It was the, the guy? It was the guy before that one was Lee Strobel. And then that guy. Okay, because the guy who just ex- broke down his whole book, that was crazy to me. Yeah. That guy. This is an ad. That was a straight up ad. <laughs> I don't know who that guy was, but it, it sounded pretty much the same, the same thing as Lee Strobel, uh, where he was just saying like, you know, oh, people did think like one of the points was the disciples, Jesus followers, kept if it was a uh, conspiracy, they kept it going way too long for you to really accept it as a conspiracy. And then okay. the um, the bad lawyer was like, oh, so you, you figured this all out when you were a Christian. He's like, actually, I was an atheist trying to disprove it. But now I'm a Christian because evidently it's true. And then the lawyer's like, oh, I don't oh, have any other questions oh, oh. and just walked away. <laughs> I was like, come on, guys. Like, this is if you really want to make a case, put out good opinions against christianity and try to combat those like don't don't make these straw man arguments just to make Mm -hmm. yourself look good like if you're gonna do it if like i think i just i'm just imagining david a.r white like walking through the christian section of the bookstore picking two books and being like well those are two scenes for us because just two plugs for books basically yeah Yeah, and there was a third one man myth messiah they kept showing they just it felt like it was uh funded by those books Maybe yeah, it's a decent chance. I, I don't, I don't know how they get the money. <laughs> and frankly, I don't think I want to. They, I think uh, they're dirt cheap to make and they make a lot of money. Oh, absolutely. The first one looked like it was made over a weekend for $5 yeah. on a campus that they didn't have permits for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I would almost bet Dean Kane's salary for that movie was more than the entire production budget. Yeah, probably. Um, but yeah, no, I don't know. They, we, <laughs> you sent me that link about Pure Flix doing the story about the the Thai kids. 
and you oh, were yeah. excited about that, but it's just his other production company. It's not going to be Christian it's, based. It's not going to be good though. Like, yeah. <laughs> let's not kid ourselves. It's the same guy, and I am so excited to see what it does with that story. I want Elon Musk to have a cameo though. The actual Elon Musk, or do you want <laughs> Dean Cain playing Elon Musk in the background? I would love it if they could put Elon Musk in there somehow. <laughs> Oh man, that was crazy. The whole everything, everything here in Thailand, like people would not stop talking about it. It was uh, it was intense. Oh really? Yeah, I imagine it would be pretty nuts there because people were going crazy about it like, here. Yeah, yeah, it's it's nuts, man. But uh, yeah, God's yeah. not dead too. It's a good. Like I'm glad they got out. Did it? Uh, are you more Christian yeah. now? Are you double Christian now that you've seen this? I mean, I feel like. I got the experience of going to church because I was just really bored and tired and I wanted to do anything else. <laughs> so in that way, it's a very authentic Christian experience. No <laughs> offense, everyone. Uh, <laughs> but um, uh, in terms of the the fake Christianity I have, I have uh, absorbed through these movies, yes, I am more empowered than ever. Yeah. Uh, and I, much like the, the Chinese now expatriate, I guess I am. Uh, You're going to go back to your people calling. This is my, well, my, I, I am still in Canada, but oh. you know, uh, this is my new calling. Uh, I guess I, well, I, if I'm going to track down to the family tree, I'll go to Scotland. I'll there go back go. to Scotland okay. and uh, be a, be a preacher there. There you go. So that's, that's, that's what I'll do. Uh, so yeah, our next episode will be recorded from Scotland <laughs> on God's not dead three, where uh, I will blow myself up inside a church at the <laughs> end. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. This, <laughs> I, I have a hard time with any Christian media, with Christian music, Christian movies. They're all, they're pandering and they're low effort. Mm -hmm. And the artists and the creators, this, it always just feels like, oh, this is a fallback thing. Like they're, they're okay mm -hmm. at what they're doing, but mm -hmm. in the Christian realm, they're like great at what they're doing. You know what I mean? Like the, yeah the you you just add in that christian element and you go from a five to a ten and yeah it's it's very frustrating is it weird that i was disappointed by this movie in a way that it wasn't crazy in or? a way i was that it wasn't it was just so nothing it was yeah. just such a nothing movie well i think and they like, realized you know, the acting was bad and the music was bad and it but it like it looked like a movie it was just such an empty pile of nothing <laughs> yeah well i think they realized after the first one that how poor of a job they did at trying to get their point across so they tried to cut out that craziness of you know with kevin sorbo getting hit by a car and becoming christian right afterwards because i still don't get that i feel like it felt it did feel a lot more like this there was a lot more looking right at the camera and explaining what you're supposed to think in yeah. this movie mm -hmm. They didn't, they didn't try to do any sort of abstract stuff. No. They didn't try to <laughs> like play around with any sort of metaphors. They, did, they didn't do much of that in the first one. There was a lot of talking uh, about everything because that movie is nothing but talking. But this movie was just sitting and having people go on long monologues about the book they wrote or how you're supposed to think. Like the, the soul patch lawyer's thing at the end when he comes yeah, in, he's like yelling at her. And then he turns around and he says, "Like, uh, if we're gonna if we're gonna put her on trial just for being Christian, I'm like, it's not really what she's on trial for." And yeah. I get what they're saying; it's it's what she's actually on trial for, but it's not. That's not the issue. And honestly, well, I didn't feel that sympathetic towards her because she's in a public school environment. Just say you're just apologize. Don't talk about the Bible again in your class and move on with your life. <laughs> well, what do you think she was even on trial for? What like? <sighs> I, I think it was just because you, I don't know. I think it's that, a state law thing. I don't even know where this movie takes place. I don't know any of the characters' names. I don't know where the movie takes place. I was falling asleep so many times. It's, it's just, yeah, it doesn't. I think it was just a state law thing where like, you can't mention it at all, even in any context, even though they explain very clearly why contextually it makes sense to do that. So maybe it was more a complaint about that specific law, which makes this movie even more pathetic because you're just complaining about one state's law or maybe many states' laws, but who cares? <laughs> yeah. Well, I was who listening to, um, I don't even remember who it was, but it was an interesting point that I'm just going to steal and not give credit towards them. 
uh, he Good. said that uh, it's the what the Christians or what Pure Flix is saying is we need to be allowed to talk about Jesus. But yet, if this movie was about a Muslim teacher who was in the same position, she would be the bad person. She would be the the enemy. Well, you know, that's like, true. That's actually a really good point. We don't want Muslim because... stuff talk. We don't want Muslim teachers sharing their yeah. their propaganda. We only want our propaganda yeah. shared. And it's like, I, I yeah. It's, Even though American and Canadian cultural stuff is pretty similar, all of high school, and I can't recall a single Bible reference in any way. Hmm. So maybe it's just like a cultural thing. Like it's not, it's Christianity, maybe it's just where I was, wasn't really at the forefront of anything. Like I, I come from a really small town. So yeah. There wasn't any sort of significant presence or of anything like that. Um, so yeah, I, I can't really relate to this idea of like always walking on eggshells around Christianity. Yeah. Well, because, I don't, I don't think it I mean, exists. Even, it, it, I don't think that yeah, that's an actual most of it is made thing. Up. Most of the conflict for these protagonists is made up, but even if they, I mean, it, I just felt like the main character was a really dumb sort of character. And again, it's all set up so she can look like the, the, the good Christian woman who stands by her values always. Yeah. But if she had just said, now guys, I want to be clear. I'm just going to quote this. So I, so you all understand just for, just for references sake, don't, don't freak out just for reference. Like if she just said like, and because she just jumps right into the verse immediately. But you know, if she just said something like, um, and this is the full quote, just for, just for, a uh, uh, sake of context, she gives a thing and says, but you know, just to be clear, like that's, they, that's just a reference or a comparison point because my student asked me. Yeah. Well, the other thing is she was but comparing she because we need a movie it all with Gandhi too. Like it wasn't even just, just Christian historical figures. Gandhi was in there and they're like, Oh, Martin Luther King and Gandhi had these similar points. And then the, the girl's like, Oh, isn't that kind of what Jesus said? And she's like, Yep. And then she <laughs> has to go to court and it becomes this giant thing. And it just it doesn't it doesn't make any sense. It it feels like the same people who complain about mm-hmm. Starbucks not being Christmassy enough. Oh yeah, it's so dumb. Are the people who are going to see these movies. Well, my alternate cut of this movie is she asked the question, is that kind of like when Jesus says you should love your neighbor? And the teacher says, yes, credits roll. (laughs) (laughs) My alternate cut was capital punishment at the end. They just behead her in there. (laughs) <laughs> in That'd <front> be of- <laughs> great. Can <laughs> you imagine that? Like they they find her, they find her they, guilty they, of talking about Jesus. Guilty, and they drag her on the court steps and cut her head off. <laughs> well, that's. I mean, that's the thing that the they're putting forward is we have to fight against this, otherwise that's where it's going to get to. And it's yeah, it's the thing is going to be a French Revolution, and it's not. Yeah, it's. I don't know, man. It's. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough because it, there's a lot of things in this movie that I I don't necessarily disagree with. I just hate mm-hmm. that it's it's forced into it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's it's not a true story. And so you're making these villains like so evil, uh, yeah. and so antagonistic and it's like not believable. So that as a story, mm-hmm. it doesn't make sense. And then you're trying to use this. It's too contrived. It's just too yeah. contrived in every way because they need to make a point, something that's fabricated in their own heads to make themselves feel better about their own faith. Yeah. And then they're trying to use it as an example or an encouragement to the Christian community. Like, here you guys go. This is for you. And it's it's just propaganda. It's just isolating or insulating them from the world and that's the opposite of the message of christ you Mm -hmm. when you start making you know atheists or muslims or whoever the enemy who hates you and wants to take everything away from you and everything you believe away you you start to hide and that that's the complete opposite it's yeah there's no perseverance being portrayed there's no sort of any challenge is it, I, I never for one second believe that things wouldn't work out perfectly for her yeah. and that the atheist lawyers wouldn't be like leaving embarrassed and broken. And at the end it's like, well, you did prove that Jesus exists. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> Ugh, shut up. I was surprised <laughs> that the, the <clears throat> pastor got an appendicitis. 
That was a plot twist <laughs> I didn't see coming. It was a good twist. I thought it was going to turn into, did you ever see the uh, Pauly Shore son-in-law movie? I did a very long time ago. <laughs> Where he, he he's just the dirtbag guy who doesn't have a job, gets chosen for jury duty and is getting paid for it. So his whole thing is to keep the jury hung so he can keep getting paid. I expected the okay. pastor to be the only one who's like not guilty <laughs> and then just <clears throat> keeping the jury hung until he convinces everyone that she's not guilty. But then they took yeah. him out and replaced her, replaced him with that uh, scene. Is scene the right? I don't even know. She had like I, brightly colored uh, hair. Like she seemed like a sort raver. Of, that's sort of, yeah. Like. Exactly. But that's the thing, though. She comes in, you see her with her dyed hair, and you're like, oh, she's not a woman of God. Yeah. This and, is- then, uh, and then at the end, she has a tattoo, but it's a tattoo of a cross. Yeah. Oh, my God. They she, did it. She did the uh, the T-Rex va- uh, Velociraptor nod to Melissa Joan Hart at the end, <laughs> and yeah. you, you see the cross, and I, I started laughing out loud. I was like, this is so dumb. Oh, that is that so got me because like, the Newsboys music is rising, yeah. you know? and like that happens. I'm like... Yeah, Christopher Nolan actually wrote this movie. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think it was his he did brother. On it. it was uh what's his brother's name? He does Westworld. Jonathan Nolan? Is it Jonathan? That would make sense because it uh, it was dumb and it made no sense, just like Westworld. <laughs> Dude, Westworld's good. You don't like it's Westworld? Right. And this is coming I like from Westworld. Riverdale. <clears throat> I have mixed feelings. I'm making a video about Westworld soon. I have very right. mixed feelings on it. What happened with um your video about the podcasting Christian guy who sees god the what <laughs> i don't even know the name of it the podcaster who saves people because god gives him information oh, it's a tv um, show what is that called god friended me god, god friended, friended me. me yeah yeah <laughs> yes that's well when that comes out i'm for sure doing like weekly videos about it hopefully oh, or something wait. like that I'm i so have excited. a few projects projects in the work right now like i have a lot of stuff i'm going to be doing this year but um i got more commentary style videos yeah uh like mostly on video. arrow right and I... shut up <laughs> <laughs> don't you dare hit that nerve i'm done i can't do it anymore i hate it <laughs> i got i'm about four episodes in the flash and arrow of the latest season and then i saw that yeah. he gets arrested and i'm like oh maybe this seems like it might be worth finishing but i'm i'm worried i feel like it's not the the rest of it, it's 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 not very good, but I don't know if I was ever going to like it, which is why I'm kind of done with that. Because what's the point? Yeah, I hope they just After bring while, in the Joker yeah. and he murders everybody, and then Oliver turns back into That'd a be, murderer. Well, they're making a well. We'll have to see if Joaquin Phoenix is Joker uh, when they make that movie. If that happens, yeah, it's going to be the Killing Joke. I heard right. I do something like that. Who knows? DC's going nuts and I love it. But you know, everything, <laughs> everything, comic book movies are kind of all in like a weird state right now. Like yeah. nothing really makes any sense. Like Venom looks like absolute garbage. But I, I haven't even watched the trailer for it. But uh, today it looks horrendous yeah. and I'm so pumped. <laughs> I'm so amped, dude. It looks like Suicide Squad level trash, just terrible. <laughs> and then you have like any, like Aquaman looks uh, aquaman like looks generic thing. terrible i i was talking it to looks, someone looks dumb. about it and i was like man it seems like they're hitting all the negative tropes that a, a superhero movie has and yeah then, but it's just the most generic like it's just beat by beat like yes yeah old family challenge to the throne blah 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 like it's black panther i guess sort of reverse it, black panther yeah with sharks yeah underwater and it looks, and it's it even looks like wakanda underwater shazam though looks like a lot that of looks fun. interesting i'm that like looks a little more as like shades of chronicle to it which is interesting yeah, yeah yeah but they're making like three joker movies right now and a birds of prey movie and i think matt reeves is still making a batman movie and then marvel is doing well they're doing captain marvel and then they're just kind of quietly still making movies they haven't oh. really announced anything because they weren't at comic-con and then like Fox, no one even knows what's happening because they pushed both their X-Men movies back. And now mm-hmm. people are thinking they might just can them all well, didn't, and bring them into Marvel. Wasn't it official that Disney got Fox? Did yeah, not it's it? official now. Yeah, but they have Dark Phoenix and New Mutants, I think, they done should... or almost done, like pretty much made. New Mutants seems worth putting out. Dark Phoenix can just die. Like they're going to just 
kill that storyline well, I mean, if, if like already, they did with X3. Yeah, but, but yeah, they, I fi- I figure like finish the movie, make some money while you can, and then it's all going to go to Disney anyway. So who yeah. cares really? Yeah. If but, it flops, like it might because Apocalypse was such a freaking disaster. It was so bad. The what was the one was before Apocalypse? That was Days of Future Past. That or was no. Uh, yes. No, there was a. Was there a Wolverine? No. Days of Future Past. That's that was when yeah. Quicksilver first showed up, right? About, no, Deadpool came out in 2015. Okay. So yeah, it was Days of Future Past, then Deadpool, then. There was no X Men, strictly X Men movie in 2015, but it was Days of Future Past, then Deadpool, then Apocalypse, and did something else come out in 2016 that was X Men or no? 2016. Logan came out in 17, right? And Apocalypse came out in 2016. Am I crazy? Am I dumb? What am I thinking of? Oh, I mean, they're not. I don't know. I don't have exclusive. all this memorized because why would I? <laughs> <laughs> it already takes up too much thought space in my but brain. Days of Future Past is the second of the first class trilogy. And that one was good. Yeah. Apocalypse good, yeah. just like took all that momentum and threw it in reverse. That was yeah, trash. It was great. It was good trash. That was fun <laughs> trash. Um it was so good. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know, man. The I I'm like so done with superhero movies. I'm I'm done with blockbuster movies in general because that's all i get I, yeah. in town like all oh, the yeah. interesting movies like uh sorry to bother you didn't come through upgrade didn't oh, come through you, i i saw that last night yeah you have got to see that at some point i i it want is, to hereditary didn't come through amazing it's like all these yeah. movies that people I mean, are I'm, yeah. saying are good are being skipped i'm over. really lucky i have uh, i have an independent theater yeah just downtown from where i live like it's like a 10 minute walk from me and all the good stuff goes there so it's and it's it's a really good place so i get lucky with that and i've seen a lot more so i'm trying to see more movies per year now yeah but like yeah blo- like more and more i'm finding like my tastes are changing as i'm getting into movies more and like blockbuster stuff is just getting so flavorless to yeah me. it's so boring and the more i see and it, it is very much like the more you see the more like movies in general, it takes a lot to like really hit me now and get me. Yeah, which which is unfortunate because I want every movie to like get me as well as it would have like ten years ago. That's just not realistic. Well, that like was the new Mission Impossible was solid. Like that was a good blockbuster. Like the new Mission Impossible, it, the action it's, was like, cool, but the impressive. the chemistry yeah. between all the actors was so uncomfortable. Like Ving Rhames, yeah, it was weird. Was really strange, and it felt very. You know, like in uh, Fast and the Furious, when Vin Diesel talks about how, oh, it's all about family. That's what every yeah. speech in Mission Impossible felt like. It just felt like a bunch of, <laughs> kind of, yeah. it's all about family speeches, but it was all about Ethan is going to save the world. Don't worry. He's going to always save through or come through. Don't worry. Yeah. And I was like, all right, guys, like, get over it. He- well. We'll, we will discuss that further in the next Blockbuster podcast for God's Not Dead, <laughs> A Light in the Darkness. Oh, I can't wait. Uh, they, didn't call it, they didn't call it three. They decided to give it a real mouthful of a title. Did you see they hate- the clip of the pastor talking about the title? No. He, <laughs> what did he say? He was very adamant that this is not part three. This is God's Not Dead, A Light in the Darkness. The, the interviewer is like, <laughs> so this is God's Not Dead three? And the pastor like, no, 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 no not three a light in the darkness like they're trying to separate themselves from the first two which so this is so what was the next one will be god's not dead a light in the darkness too i hope so apocalypse <laughs> great <laughs> revelations it'll be god <laughs> if you can't oh, think of a title just put revelations <laughs> yeah this is god's not dead Two goes on the heaping pile of christian garbage movies that i've seen left mm-hmm. behind terrible uh saving christmas the worst movie I've ever seen. You should watch that today. Really? Yeah. Kirk Cameron saving I Christmas. Will <laughs> it will I will not watch that. It will change your life. Wait till Christmas, man. <laughs> it's not even a Christmas movie. Eve. It's not even a movie. I like I don't even Good. know how to explain it. Good. Like there's not a there's no story structure. I it's I'll experience it soon enough. It what it was, it should have been a five minute YouTube video that they stretched out into an hour and thirty minutes. Okay. Very good. I love that. <laughs> yeah. That's a great pitch. <laughs> um, I'm loving it already. Facing the Giants. I don't know if you've ever seen that. Not the worst. Not, it's not terrible. It's the low, okay. low quality production. 
but it's what's the best christian movie you've seen what would you say is the best christian movie um i haven't seen them for a while but it would either be uh facing the giants which is about american football or okay. uh fireproof which is a kurt cameron firefighter movie and okay uh fireproof is about marriage facing the giants is about uh overcoming obstacles and so they're not okay. like evangelistic in their approach <clears throat> okay. i mean it's somewhat evangelistic okay. just because it's christianity in general but by nature of being a kirk cameron movie yeah it's somewhat evangelistic. <laughs> <laughs> but like uh fireproof is pretty good because it's about being a good husband and making your marriage okay. strong and so like that's that's actually like a decent story from what i remember i mean it might be garbage it has I... like a point like a movie yeah <laughs> yeah it's got a story to it <laughs> that's cute <laughs> um yeah so it would be one of those two like uh okay yeah but everything i mean almost all of it's bad yeah well which is unfortunate because it's there's a market for like a good story to be told like that and I feel like the only thing you get is like a passion of the Christ or like a prestige sort of TV drama, you know, like about the Bible itself. Prestige like the Christopher Nolan movie? No, prestige like oh, okay. very high quality. Gotcha. Like the, the, the like that Bible. I forget. It was a few years ago. They did like a series called The Bible or something. Or oh, yeah. It was on like history, right? Yeah, and uh, I heard good things about that from, I mean, Christians I know, so maybe they're a little biased in their enjoyment, but uh, I mean, if it's well-made, it's well-made. My favorite is, uh, my favorite story about Christian movies is um, Passion of the Christ and John Caviezel getting hit by lightning twice on the cross. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> like, if that doesn't tell That's you pretty good. you're doing something wrong, then I don't know what does. I mean, I would do that in like a parody of that. Yeah, that's like an SNL good. skit. I like it when movies make fun of themselves before I can. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, Ross, how can people find you? How can they hear your opinions and your, how can they listen to you preach is basically what I'm getting at. Uh, <laughs> how can they listen to you preach? That's very good. Uh, I'm very much like Pastor Dave. Yeah. I, I always consider that, you more uh, the Chinese guy. Really? <laughs> yeah, you got a funny accent. Do I seem from a different what? place? What are you talking about? About? <laughs> I don't have an accent. <laughs> about? Yeah, about. That's how you say it. How do you say it? I'm sorry. I'm very sorry <laughs> that you think that. <laughs> <laughs> so, how can they find out more about Arrow? Where is that? Oh, God. <laughs> Uh, I don't talk about Arrow that much anymore, but uh, my YouTube channel is just my name, Ross McIntyre. Uh, you can find a link to my Twitter and stuff through the videos. It's all on the channel. Just Google Ross McIntyre, and it'll it should be the first result. I'm kind of a big deal. Yeah, I would say the biggest deal. The biggest. <laughs> I'm, I'm the biggest I'm Ross, the most famous person I in know. the world. Oh, well, I don't know, Ross Geller from Friends. That's true. Just have, in terms of cultural impact. Have you been getting caught up on Friends for our Friends podcast yet? I have not, tragically. Uh, oh, I man. forgot. Uh, and by that, I mean I completely decided not to do that. It's a no, daily actually, a more famous Ross. three-hour more podcast. More famous Ross is uh, Ross Butler. Ross Butler, the actor, the uh, Asian-American actor from 13 Reasons Why and the first season of Riverdale. Oh, I didn't know that was his name. I support him. I support all famous Rosses. That's a good idea. 13 Reasons Why is yeah. trash. We got to stick together. I'm going to get on that soon. I'm excited to watch it. You haven't watched it yet? No, I'm waiting until like the third oh. season to come around because I feel like I'm going to have uh, a, an opinion about it. It's so bad, man. Good. I'm hyped. <laughs> well, you can find us on Twitter at I Seen That Pod, and I'll be back with Taylor. Uh, I don't know what's coming out this weekend. I used to be a lot more organized when I record these things. Ah, you'll figure it out. Yeah, that's all right. I'm... It'll be something. <laughs> all right, man. Thanks for uh, doing this. All right. Absolutely. Had a great time.